It's the Ryan Lehrer Show on WNYC, and did you know that this is Brain Awareness Week? And we are very happy to have the renowned performance artist Marina Abramovich here in the studio. We're both wearing headsets with sensors on them. So, Susanna Dicker, what exactly am I wearing and why? So you're wearing a wireless emotive EEG headsets that uh, records uh, patterns of electrical activity that's emitted by your brain. And then these brain waves are sent to my computer where I am going to compare your brain waves to Marina's brain waves because what we are trying to investigate is what it means to be on the same wavelength, so to speak, and whether there's a relationship. You know, when I got this idea to be present in MoMA during my retrospective of three months, I didn't have no idea that I will have this kind of reaction on the public. So uh, I have 1,750 people sitting in the front of me on any amount of time, everything between 15 minutes to seven hours. And not, there was no talking, it was just about gaze. And that gaze, it, it really changed my life. There's something happened with, with this, uh, you know, moment of, you know, looking to the person, complete, total stranger in the eyes. And the emotions that came out of this, it was so tremendous. I mean, the, almost 90% of people cry. They, they, they sit there for maybe a few seconds, sometimes three minutes, and it burst into this incredible emotional Why do you, you know, think response. they cry? Looking so this, at you, a person okay, they didn't know. I could not tell this because I, I really didn't know all this, what happened. I could not explain that till actually... I, the scientists got interest in me and told me why we don't this, do this experiment with mutual gaze and see what really happened with the brain. And this was, the, you know, the, my step to the science because I didn't want to I didn't want to just to left on this that maybe the art is just kind of hocus pocus of emotions, but it must be something scientifically to be explained. Why do people have this a need to to, uh, to show their feelings in Europe what people mostly don't do? What we actually know about the brain? Well, mm. almost nothing. We That's know. a good platform to start. Yes, it's a good. <laughs> so we now uh, we we should a, lo- a lot of upside <laughs> from that starting point. No, I mean that's uh, you know, of course we have you know very important rich knowledge from let's say a hundred years or two thousand years of studying the brain. But the fact of the matter is we don't know how information is actually stored, how it is that you suddenly retrieve an emotion in your head, how it is that you and I can have a conversation at all. How that scientists are so cynical about everything? Why you just sometimes believe things without <laughs> proofs? <laughs> Uh, I guess my question is to you: Why are you so cynical and believe things? I think that there's a there's a real difference, right? So I think in the sciences we try to find regularities in the world, in the biological or the physical world, and try to come up with explanations of things. If we should be so but lucky to find phenomenon maybe coming from the arts that enriches our understanding of the mind and brain through, let's say, in this case, empirical aesthetics, but that's you can't very deny, legitimate. You can't deny the phenomena who exist and you can't explain them. And you can't explain you c- and Now we have the sure. entire science based on brain and we don't even know what brain it is. It's, it's really mind-blowing.